Cody Lenhurst, I'm the head athletic trainer for the Rapid City Rush, and I just finished my third season. We're doing this series on concussions and how impactful they are in the world of sports for mm -hmm. those people that live under a rock. What is a concussion? Concussion is basically just any, um, it's a brain injury um, from a, a jar or a blow to the head that um, comes from either a hit where the player gets hit into the boards, the ice, another player, uh, elbow to the head, fighting, all those can cause concussion. Now, obviously, there are certain measurements to identify concussions and to take care of concussions. Today, we're going to be talking about the impact test. So what exactly is the impact test? So the impact test is a computer test that we use. Um, we baseline every single player um, at the start of the, every season when they come in. So during training camp, I basically make a schedule, and guys come in, and they sit down in front of the computer for half hour and rack their brains to get our baseline. And then with that, we have a, a solid piece of data to test against um, during the season if we need to, if we suspect a concussion. So what is the impact test? test? The impact test um, looks at memory composite, verbal and visual, visual motor speed composite, reaction time and impulse control, and then there's a separate section for symptoms. Diagnosing a concussion then, what goes into that? Um, me being here every single day with the players, I kind of know their quirks, if they're having an off day, if they're their normal self. Um, so during practice or a game, if there's a, a hit and they're slow to get up, um, that's one one uh, thing that might pique my interest and in, you know have a brief conversation with them. Um, we have what's called the SCAT, and it starts off with a bunch of symptoms. And if they report any of those symptoms, um, they're basically withheld from activity and um, kind of just keep an eye on them. Um, we use the impact as more of like an objective look. So if they pass their impact and it looks normal compared to their baseline, then we can kind of reintegrate them into activity through our protocol, which is a five-step protocol. Um, if it looks a little off, then we might send them to... Uh, promotion and see Phil, one of the PTs up there that is kind of specializing in concussion rehab. Um, but really, it's just getting to know your players. If you know their ins and outs and their normal behaviors, you know, some guys might be um, pretty uh, quick. You know, some guys might have a really quick answer all the time. Other guys might kind of him and haw. Um, but like, you know, for you, you don't necessarily know how they are on a daily basis um, so somebody might get up slow from a hit and you're up in the booth saying hey he might be you know concussed well if he gets up slow every time he gets hit that's normal and it's getting to know what's normal for your players now obviously you're trying to make this assessment all the time what if what if a player comes up to you and says hey I think I need to be looked at how how often is it you assess the concussion or somebody comes up to you and says hey something's not right with me um, it's becoming more and more popular now that players will kind of come to the medical staff and say, hey, I just don't feel right uh, because it is pretty prevalent in, in sports and in the media now. Um, as far as sitting down and walking a player through um, these tests, it happens pretty often. Um, it might not be very formal. It could just be a couple questions on the bench like, hey, how's the head? Or, you know, do you feel all right? And like I said earlier, I know the players well enough because I'm with them day in and day out that I kind of, I can figure out if they're lying or telling the truth. Um, so it's just getting to know your players and um, being able to elicit the truth out of them. And you are on eggshells when you watch um, these games and, and worry about concussion, especially now with all of the legal stuff going on with it um, with the NHL the NFL um, that's where a lot of the research is going but a lot of the research you can't do until somebody's passed away because uh, you have to look actually at the brain um, but yeah you, you do kind of walk on eggshells but at the same time it's sports it's a physical sport it's going to happen and you just have to to deal with it the best you can
you baseline at the start of the year, let's say a player you believe sustains a concussion in a game, how soon after you make that assessment does he take the impact to see if that's actually the case? Generally within 24 hours. Um, so we get a snapshot at the beginning of the season with their baseline, where they're at, and then um, if we test them within 24 hours after a suspected concussion, um, we have objective data to use um, to basically show management, yes, there are deficits, this is what we're dealing with, this is our protocol moving forward. When somebody you believe sustains a concussion, how will the impact test notify you of red flags? It literally will um, show red numbers on the, uh, on the test when you compare their two scores. Is there any noticeable discrepancy in score within a certain percentage point? But if your baseline score is a 45, if you score a 43, are they going to say you're concussed? Or? Um, it depends on, so when you baseline, you fill out like how much education you have, how old you are, um, and a bunch of other uh, demographic type uh, questions are answered. And basically they have enough data in their whole system that they know what is normal um, for your age group, your education, stuff like that. So it's a pretty extensive database. So with the impact test, assuming I'm a player of yours and I go through, knock on wood, I go through a whole season without anything concussion related, I don't take the impact test at any other point outside of training camp, right? So if we, if we baseline at the beginning of the year, like we always do, and there's no reason to believe that there's been a concussion or any concussion-like injury throughout the season, that's the only time they sit down and take this test. If we think that there's been a concussion or a head injury, then they would have to retest, and they retest until their test normalizes. You baseline, player gets a concussion, takes the impact, it's determined he has a concussion. When he goes through his rehab, will he take this again to try and meet his baseline? Yes. So in order to, to basically be cleared from a concussion, your impact test has to normalize. So you have to be back within a certain range of what your baseline was. So what I tell the players when they sit down and take this, it's you're only tested against your scores if, if we have to retest. Player goes through his rehab, retests, his test normalizes. In later editions of this test, will the impact showcase that he's had concussions before? Unless it directly asks them. Yeah, so there's a part in there where you have to, um, you basically disclose any previous concussions that you've had. Um, and that's, it's a tough question to answer because a, a lot of the older players um, may not have been formally diagnosed with a concussion. And then it asks you for a year and month. And then it asks you to um, list your five most recent. So a lot of times that ends up being kind of a, best guess as to when that concussion was you know spring of my junior year of college that was oh let me look mm, you know this year um so there is a there is a part in the software where you have to disclose your previous concussions and that does kind of factor into how they score we hope you enjoyed the first part of our four-part special on concussions here on All Access. When we come back for part two, the head athletic trainer of the Rapid City Rush, Cody Lindhorst, will walk us through SCAT, the sideline concussion assessment tool. This is Mark Benetti alongside you for All Access, and we'll see you next time on part two.